off. Let's talk about another health yep. issue that is of concern. And last week on the show, we asked you about the backlog to cancer care and specifically around response times for breast cancer screening. So just as a reminder, this was your yes. response to those figures. keeping pace with what we've seen in the past. Uh, look, in terms of screening, uh, there are a mixture of whether or not people were coming and accessing and its availability. I'd want to go away and just double check on that because the Cancer it's Control Agency, again, uh, has highlighted, with the exception of August last year, it has the numbers have been keeping pace with what we would expect. OK, well, the CEO of the Breast Cancer Foundation rejected that and got in touch with us after that, and, and this was her response. Oh, we strongly disagree with this, Brian. Um, we've been writing to the government for uh, over six months now. We now know that there are 50,000 women overdue for their screening mammogram. And what this means purely on the numbers of those 50,000 women, we estimate that 300 of those women could have cancer. So, Prime Minister, are the numbers being fudged to make it look like there is no backlog? No, not at all. All. And I did say I was going to go away and have a look at the screening because what I was talking about in that interview predominantly was diagnosis because the Cancer Control Agency... Okay. The Cancer Control Agency... OK, so what's happening gone away in the screening and done some then? analysis up until... Yeah, sure, up until... I'll just finish there as well because there's a little bit extra that they need to report on. What we can see is that we've got... Um, uh, up until... Uh, Omicron, we had some analysis from yep. that Delta period around what we'd expect on, on um, diagnoses. So we do need to still see Although the diagnosis Although it's not actually, the, the Cancer, Cancer Control, Control Agency says it's on still screening, not what they expected the issue, because it said the overall impact sorry, of COVID-19. I, just... I, I just want to correct um, what the Cancer Control Agency I genuinely Agency want to answer says. your questions. If I might speak to the screening issue... So on well, level four, I, I, we were going to speak about screening, screening but you were impacted. talking about the Cancer Control Agency. So I just want to say what they actually did say in December, which was that the impact is considerably smaller than the disruption seen in April and May of 2020. But they are saying that yes. there has been an impact. And this is what the Breast Cancer uh, Foundation is saying too. So it just, with the government saying on one hand that there is no backlog and Breast Cancer Foundation that, that is saying a, that, that there's 50,000 people... The Control Quite. Agency, again, uh, has highlighted, with the exception of August last year, it has the numbers have been keeping pace with what we would expect. Well, if I, do. Uh, you know, th there's a discrepancy. If I may, sorry, if, you were, if I may, there, there's, really, there's really not. What Sorry, if you were, if I may, there, there's really, there's really not. What I was trying to acknowledge was actually during level four. Yes, we didn't have the same level of screening that was being undertaken because many health services weren't operating at that point. And so, at now in the COVID protection framework, we we are seeing that the screening is available. Extended hours have been operating to make sure that even though they're using physical distancing and so on, they're still able to provide appointments. We do need a catch up though, because we're about ten percent down on what you would otherwise otherwise have been seeing. So on, they're still able to provide appointments. We do need a catch up though, because we're about ten percent down on what you would otherwise appointments. We do need a catch up though because we're about 10% down on what you would otherwise otherwise have been seeing. Okay, so but we do the, need a recovery you plan were saying that to the, catch up that on what we have. The system is available. The Breast Cancer Foundation said this is absolutely an issue with availability. Um, that there are 50,000 breast screens that should have happened, which means there are likely 300 people, 300 women out there who have cancer and don't know about it. You suggested last week that so it was potentially thing... due to people not, not going, but it's actually about availability. No, well, actually, one of the things that we've had is feedback that people have been concerned about attending. So well, that's listen, certainly not what the Breast things. Cancer Foundation simple... is saying or what the feedback was from our viewers who said that they are trying to get appointments, but they're being delayed months. So we do have we do have an issue, of course, with the regular amount of screening that we usually do being up and running, but people who may have missed out previously because of level four environments 
also seeking to be screened. So while we're running extended hours, and in some localities, they've done a great job of trying to catch up. And others, particularly those that were affected by level four for long periods, there is extra work to do. I've just been talking with some of our ministers around that recovery plan. And one of the things that they're looking at is as we see some of the pressure on uh, uh, across the board, looking at is as we see some of the pressure on uh, uh, across the board around Omicron, that extra uh, campaign around making sure that people uh, are coming forward because there is a mixture of two things. There are some people who may not have come forward because they don't want to access health services in this environment. So we know that that is an issue. Others, it'll be about making sure we have extra appointments on top of what we'd usually be doing. So yes, there's some work there to do. There are I'm not in going terms to make of surgery of delays. There is 60% who haven't been getting surgery within 31 days of diagnosis. Are you saying that that is due to people not wanting to come forward? for the surgery? No, 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 no. I was just speaking to screening and this is where I do want to be careful. Last week I was speaking to diagnoses and we still also need to wait for the analysis over this right up until February. We've got some of the data from the period of Delta, but we haven't got the most recent information. Okay, so the Breast no, Cancer sorry, Foundation, the here just is if that I can across ask the it. health system, if I just might finish, please. There is no doubt that the issue of COVID has had an impact. It would have been a much greater impact had we not had the strategy we had. You look over in the UK, the NHS has not been providing the same planned care or cancer care that they otherwise would. The, the impact here could have been far greater. Yes, we do have catch up to be done. Planned care is gonna be a particular issue where elective surgery has been delayed. We're working very hard to get the health system back into, and this is where these orange and red decisions play out, okay. get the health system back into the place where we can undertake all of that usual care. And but so it's the, not the Breast Cancer say Foundation says it would cost getting $15 million dollars for a thousand otherwise extra they catch -ups. Would you pledge? Would you commit $15 million for that, for the catch-up? Because they've been saying they've been asking It's not fair months. to say that this is solely a financial issue. It's not. It is often a workforce issue. The surge capacity that exists in our cancer care is for the screening that we have day in, day out. So when you've got that extra need, you don't necessarily have the workforce or the equipment to then do an exponential increase across that. Okay. So it is not just a matter of money. If it were, these things would be so much more straightforward. Absolutely. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, appreciate your time. Thanks very much. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought.